Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla, and we're so glad you could join us this morning. But before we get into the Word, let's take a moment and pray. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your compassion, Lord. We thank you for the grace that you've extended towards us, and Lord, we extend it to others. We ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, show us things to come, and minister to us our needs, Lord, so that we can triumph in you, Lord, and we can do what you've asked us to do. We thank you for this time in fellowship this morning, and we thank you for the opportunity to come and draw closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you with us this morning as we get deeper into our study of the book of Hebrews. And we have a special guest in the studio with us today. Some of you may recall our dear brother in Christ, Dean who has joined us, uh, traveled out here, and and I'm looking forward to getting to, to the Word. And I'm sure for those of you who have been with us for any length of time, listen to the different books that we've studied so far, and you know you're in for a treat. And I'm definitely going to get the interlinear in this episode today and for mm-hmm. probably the next few. So, mm-hmm. so welcome, brother. It's good to have you with us. Glad to be with you guys. Amen. So. Amen. Just a just a little detour on my way to Florida from Virginia, you know. <laughs> a most welcome detour. Absolutely, yes, yes, always, and always happy with a belly full of biscuits, you know, and gravy. <laughs> so, what a great morning! Amen to that. Well, all right, so this morning we are in chapter two, and we're going to move forward and cover verses five through nine. So, could I get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, Charles. For he has not put the world and world to come, of which he, we speak, in subjugation to angels. But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjugation under his feet. For in that he put all in subjugation under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him. But but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, as is our custom, the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? I would. All right, LaCharles? Um, We talked about in previous episodes about how we know that when the Lord originally created man, he never made it for the angels to be above us. Um, We see that inside the lineup, how God was above all, then it was man, then it was angels, then it was animals, then it was plants. That's how it worked. That's how he designed it. But we also understand that once Adam sinned, then we are placed a little bit lower than the angels. And it's something very interesting that we have to think about. We also see this is a subject that um, the Lord, through Paul, is continuing to work on. We see he started inside the first um, section. But when we think about it, we have to realize that while Jesus has ascended on high and is above the angels, us as humans, we're still limited to the flesh being that we have to go around in a flesh body inside this earth. We're not just spirits floating around. So while we are, we know and understand our rights that we have through Christ and that we are technically above them, but we also have to be willing to be subject. And it's something the Lord reminded me of most times is how um, we see in the Gospels, he says, he who wants to be the greatest among you must first serve all. That's how he gave them, uh, that's how he commanded them to, become the greatest he said i'm the master i'm your master specifically but i've washed your feet and Mm -hmm. he was rebuking them for not wanting to do it for others but what the lord was sharing with me in this is that once we understand that yes while we're inside this earth we do have 
um, dominion and we should be taking that because of Christ. We're not supposed to overstep our boundaries, meaning that we're not, the angels aren't here to do our bidding. They're not here to make sure my will gets accomplished. And if you have some time and energy left, you can do the Lord's will. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. We are here to be doing the Lord's will. We're all Mm -hmm. servants of God. While he made man in his likeness and his image, he never made for man to try to replace him. Mm -hmm. He was there to worship him. Um, Adam was. And that's what we're supposed to continue doing so now. Amen. Amen. The angels hearken to the voice of God's word. Now, how we connect with that is we put God's word in our mouth and we speak and declare that, and the angels are more than happy to do the will of the Father. And we reap the benefit because we are also doing the will of the Father. Yes. Amen. Layla, you had something you want to say, sweetheart? Very quickly, LaCharles, I enjoyed that you <coughs> drew that, um, I wouldn't say analogy, but brought to our attention how the Lord designed the structure and how he designed things the divine order of what he created because we see many in the body of christ that um go through life thinking they're under and they have to grovel in the dirt and they don't understand where god placed them and what as you said with charles what rights we have as sons and daughters of the most high because we're joint heirs with christ that we aren't limited to the attacks of the adversary and have to bow down to him and let him run us over because the Lord Jesus had already defeated him. And we see in the scripture that Jesus put everything under his feet and that included the adversary and all that he tries to do. So encouragement for the body of Christ to actually stand up and embrace the um, identity and inheritance that we have from God, instead of going, I'm not good enough for that, or I'm so good that I can replace the Lord. As you said, Yes. Um, oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, Molly. no, go ahead, Le Charles. It's okay. As you were speaking, Le, the Lord was reminding me that um, we know inside of when it was first written, this wasn't written inside of chapters and books, um, written inside of chapters, I mean, in verses. But I like to bring up the fact that we know inside the previous section, he just finished asking a question. Um, he was saying that if we give heed to what angels tell us, how much more so should we give heed to what the Lord's telling us? And then he transitions into this. Um, And that's something that's very important as well that the Lord reminded me of is that when we see that Adam fell, it's um, we still, I would say, maintain our disposition, meaning that we were still in the likeness of God. We didn't suddenly change into different creatures. But the Lord was reminding me that um, when we see inside that gospel is when he's saying to serve all, he was actually giving a correlation on how to be the greatest It's not to try to dominate others, but it's because of how you're being obedient to the Lord. And the Lord was reminding me that's why the angels were slightly above us because we see the ones that did fall, they went down and they became uh, fallen angels and they got kicked out. But the ones that um, that Paul references here that are slightly above us, these are the ones that were continuing and have always done the will of God. I know my own life I have not always done as the Lord asked me to do. And I can be real with myself. Though I may try, sometimes my flesh screams out and I don't want to do it. But we have to understand that in order to truly be the greatest in the way the Lord wants us to be, we have to be willing to follow everything that the Lord wanted. Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren because he was doing everything that the Lord asked him to do. He didn't slack off and do his own will for even one second. But as humans, we don't want to do that. We want to have all the same power and the glory that Jesus has, but we don't want to give the same dedication or Um, sacrifice that he gave mean that we lay down our own will to do what the Lord wants. We want to maintain that, but still have the same um, standing I'd say. Mm -hmm. One thing, there was a lot in what you said, the Charles. So first, when the Lord gave us dominion, it wasn't over other humans. It was, he gave us the food of the spirit is self-control, not other people control. That's a manipulation and trying to control other people who have the same rights of free will that you do. That's demonic. That does not come from the father, but he gave us dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth withstanding other human beings, right? Because he also gave them free will. So he's talking about the creatures that move on the earth. Um, 
And uh, let's see, verse 30 of Genesis chapter 1, also to every beast of the earth, every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, which there is. Um, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. So the Lord wasn't saying people control people. He was saying you control yourself and each one of you who are also made in my image and likeness control yourselves. And you are correct in saying what separates um, us from, from those fallen angels is that we maintain our abode. We choose to do the will of the Father. And we choose to respect the divine order that he has set, which is also what separates the angels that are continuing in the heavenlies, crying out, holy, 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 and continuing in the work and the service of the Lord. They maintain their abode. And we'll look at, um, let's see, Jude uh, chapter one, verse six. And it says, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So just understanding, you know, naturally our minds would try to focus on, well, it was the angels that fell, but why did they fall? Because they chose not to keep their proper domain and they left their own abode, which was obedience to the father. They have the ability to choose, but not the right to choose something other than God. That's why there's no repentance for angels. But back to um, Hebrews chapter 2, looking at verse 8, um, the second part of verse 8. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. So there's a, a multi-layer reference here in what the father committed to the son, but then also a playing out through natural time, what's already been commanded and finished in the spiritual realm. So as he's talking to Jews and he is um, conversing with them based on the history that they know, and he's reminding them, uh, we talked about in chapter one, reminding them that you have always known the Messiah. You, you've been talking about him. You may not have recognized him fully, but you've memorized the word. You've been You've been saying these prayers, you've been reading these verses the whole time, and he's always been here. And so now he's elaborating on the position of Christ and the place and how all these scriptures reference him that they have long held and value and esteem. And he's saying, but this is talking about Christ Jesus. This is talking about Christ Jesus. So you have no reason to reject him. He's not foreign. He's not um, someone that is trying to perpetrate being the son of God. He is the true and living God, and he's been here the entire time. Yes. Anybody else? Oh, Promise had something. Promise, that's right. Well, Lich Charles, as you were speaking, you talked about that Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. And I would like to bring our attention to that first when the Lord's talking about this, that God is talking about while we were made lower than the angels, God, because Jesus died on the cross and his blood was shed for us, we were able to be upgraded to him. And that's why it says Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren. Mm-hmm. As in, that be, once, once Jesus died and ascended into heaven, then he was made above the angels again. And because we believe in him and Jesus can apply his blood to us, we are also able to come up with the Lord. And the Lord wanted me to come down to verse 9, where it says, talking about Jesus, that he might taste death for everyone. And this death, if you go back to Genesis, is talking about the second, not second death, um, spiritual death, as in that they were removed from the presence of God. But because of this, and once we apply the blood to ourselves and whatever is happening, God is able to work for us, and as a result, we can become like him. Amen. We apply and appropriate what he's already done to our own lives. Promise, you mentioned something very interesting um, inside of verse 9 where it says they might taste death for everyone. And we know that they did die spiritually, meaning that, as you said, they were separated from God. Um, because we know Adam that, and woman in the yes, garden? Yes, okay. because... 
Jesus is the life, and when once we're separated from him, it's like a fruit being pruned or picked off a vine, it starts to die. Mm-hmm. Though we don't immediately see the result of that. But we also see here is that when he's talking about this, um, we know from inside of the Gospels that said that the veil was torn in two and that man could start to go in, not physically into the temple, which is not what the Lord meant, but the Godhead came to live inside of us and to be one with us. We were able to have a closer and more personal relationship than when he dwelt inside the temple. Um, And with that, we have to understand that um, coming close to God does not mean that we are are perfect in the moment. Uh, We see that inside the, when they had a temple, the priest had to be quote unquote outwardly perfect, though there was no way he was before he could go in. But as humans, we don't, we're afraid of God because we don't think that we have a perspective of the Lord is just mean and wants us to do everything right. And if we're not perfect, he's going to strike us. That's the image that most Christians have of God. And they draw away from and back off from having a personal relationship with him. But we also see here is that um, Paul's reminding them that the Lord wanted a relationship with them all the time. He said, what is man that you're mindful of him? He doesn't say that you're mindful of only your son, but the Lord was looking out for us the whole time. It wasn't just when Jesus died that the Lord suddenly suddenly started being good to us and loving us. He would already had this done the whole time. and It was already planned. Um, and something, Mr. Dean, that you talked to us about when we're offline, that the Lord did all this. He created man with the intent to love him. He wasn't just doing this because it seemed like a good idea. He had a purpose and an intent. He wanted someone to love, um, kind of like a child. But we don't um, necessarily understand that or recognize what the Lord truly did for us. And we see here that I know for myself, there's been times where I didn't want to because I said, oh, Lord, you're going to take something away from me. And I wanted to go hide and put some fig leaves on. (laughs) You didn't want to come near him because you thought he was going to take something away from you. Yes, I didn't want to go near him or even talk about what I truly desired because he said, Lord, you're going to take it away from me if I tell you what I want. Um, But that's the incorrect viewpoint that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to draw near to the Lord so that way he can refine our will and our emotions, Um, meaning that once we go into us, we see Jesus's will was the Father's will, meaning that Mm -hmm. what he willed is what the Father willed for him to will. Mm Mm-hmm. He just did what the Father wanted him to do. But as humans, we don't want that. We want to will our will, and then the Lord's will will be in there if we have some time for it. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, as as children, and reminding that we need to be patient, because part of childhood is allowing time for development, right? We don't, we're not born adults, you know, fully mature. There's a, a maturation process, and for us as Christians, it continues. You know, um, he says here, at present, we do not yet see everything. And I think that's an encouragement there as well, because uh-huh. it's so easy to look at what we see in the present. Um, you know, uh, um, it's been well established that many people at the time when this was written thought that Jesus was coming at any moment, right? And they're like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And we still hear those messages coming all the time. And our job is to be patient in that, the fullness of it. And we have lots of testimony in the Old Testament of the time it takes for the fulfillment of the promises of God. And so we just have to look at this part with encouragement as well and allow for time to take time. Amen. Amen. You did something, honey? I did, yeah. So another interesting thing out of here is recognizing our place our place the one that's been given to us by our lord and our savior right so paul is continuing to if you will make the direct connection that the angel of the lord is jesus but then also acknowledging his redemptive work on the cross right and he first acknowledges and says it's said by by one in one place, right? And it's that's written by David in the Psalms. Right? What's yes. man that you're mindful of him? And then he goes into, if you will, if we really study that out, he's looking at the authority that that we've been given. Right? He said, Hey, now go and take dominion of these things. You have this. It's yours. Right? He gave it to us. Now, that was 
taken away or given away, right? With the first Adam, right? Mm -hmm. But Paul, the Apostle Paul, is also correcting us even today, saying, hey, look, the authority wasn't given to the, to the angels, especially the fallen ones. They weren't, you know, all things weren't put in subjection. We were given this authority in Christ, which is also why Christ came in or to earth in the form of man, right? With, uh, if you will, a dirt sack, right? As, as we say often here, right? Mm -hmm. So just understand, like, flesh and bone, is this is dirt. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord did exactly what I'll say. He subjected himself to the same things that we are subjected to, right? To make that choice and to demonstrate how it's done. So, which is why he has been given authority over everything, right? Or Isn't that what Jesus said? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, right? Yes. By my Father. Because he showed us, he demonstrated the pattern and the walk of faith and the life of faith. And this is how we're supposed to carry it out and I'll say walk with our Lord and Savior, being led by his Holy Spirit. He showed us what was required to be done, to put our how to put our will down and to only exclusively do the Father's will. So, which is why he has the place and position that he does. But also there's an acknowledgement of what he has done for us. Yes, there's the re redemption through his blood. But then what were his departing words? He told his disciples to occupy until he comes, until he returns. So he's saying we still ha we have been given this power and authority, if you will, back. Because he's taken over that dominion. Right? Yes. Yes. He accomplished and fulfilled the purpose which you, you know, set out to do from, from the beginning. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. And he's demonstrated how we're to do it, how we're to walk it out. So now it's up to us to, to choose. Will we walk it out? Will we put our faith into action? I remember this, this is why we're studying the book of Hebrews, right? Is to grow our faith. To learn how to not just grow our faith, but to utilize our faith. To accomplish the will, the plan, the purpose, and the covenant of the Lord on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's pause there for today. Uh, and with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right. Promise. God, I just thank you for today. Just thank you for being our God, Lord, and just teaching us how to walk with you, Lord. And, Lord, I also just thank you for disclosing your knowledge unto us, Lord, and just showing us how to apply it to our everyday lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.